美国中文电视。美国中华艾滋基金会会长，也是本次讲座的主讲人之一的内科医生王元聪，及主讲嘉宾董思美医生介绍说，他们希望通过自己求学和从医的经历，展示给青少年们作为参考，以帮助青少年们不走弯路。主要目的是想给我们这个亚裔，呃，尤其是华裔的下一代孩子，啊、呃，一些启发，一些激励，啊、呃，让让他们能够啊。呃知道有很多东西是可以做得到的，不是做不到。只要你努力就可以成功。Um, and so、um, I'm going to maybe show my own path and use that as a springboard for her, the you know allowing the youth to imagine what might be possibilities for them in the future. 美国亚裔青少年计划的主席周艳霞表示，亚裔青少年计划在未来也将举办更多类似的讲座，以帮助有意从事其他行业的亚裔青少年。那我们啊，艾滋病基金会的这个亚裔这个青年少年计划呢，将不断的啊推出啊不同的这种啊题目，啊除了这一次的在医学方面的个这些导师以外，啊我们在未来呢，甚至还会推出有关于在金融方方面或者在法律方面。参与活动的家长都对活动表示了。肯定，他们认为让孩子多参与这样的活动，可以让孩子接触到更多未来职业的潜在可能。Of course, I think having Asian leaders, Asian physicians and surgeons and doctors, uh, gives them an example of what you can accomplish. It's、uh, much easier for them to relate to someone who looks like them, who share the same culture, who share the same background. 活动同时向六名获得二零一七年第三届亚裔学生写作、绘画、吉威电影优胜的学生颁发奖牌和奖学金。来美近三年的尤安生以加强中美文化交流为题的作文获得了写作奖。他表示，奖项鼓励了他，让他更有信心在未来宣传中华文化。对，他是对我对嗯中国文化的肯呃的一个认同的一种肯定，并且我也愿意在以后的时间里，嗯，对嗯中国文化的传承做出努力。对我以后准备在大学里面啊、呃，创建一个中国文化的一个社团，并且将文化发扬光大。美国中文电视郭凯南报道。Dear parents, students, and our honorable guest speakers, and of course my beloved、uh, CAP board members,、uh, ladies and gentlemen,、uh, very very welcome. You come to the our second uh, the uh, leadership forum, and this is hosted by the uh, uh, CAP China F Fund, the Asian Youth the program. Good afternoon,、uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to.、Um 
Youth Leadership Forum. This is our second event in 2017. Um, for those who don't know China Aid Fund, let me give you a brief introduction because I started uh, with them in 2003. Um, China Aid Fund is a nonprofit organization uh, that was founded in 2003. The initial mission was to help China to fight HIV. At that time, it was becoming an epidemic in any way that we can, possibly can. And a few years later, the board of directors decided to expand the mission of China AIDS Fund to not only just help HIV uh, people, but also to help needy children in China, and also to promote Chinese tradition, culture, and also to inspire young people in America, uh, those with Asian American <coughs> background, to become leaders of the future for our community. And that's why we are here today. So the first one is on the stage is our president of the CAP, that's Dr. Vincent Wang. Thank you. And our lady girls, you know, that's Dr. Minder Yang. Yeah, Dr. Minders. <laughs> and of course, you know, uh, the one just you know standing here and uh, just support that's our chairman, you know, Dr. Liang. I'm going to introduce you again, Dr. Liang. <laughs> and our co two co chairmen, uh, one is Dr. Vincent Kwang. Yeah, uh, sorry, Dr. Jason Kwang. <laughs> Jason Kwang. And the other is our attorney, um, that will be Mrs. Um, the Nana Choi. Nana? Yeah. And of course, um, most humble, you know, Dr. Dr. Hunt, uh, where are you? You know, I will try to, uh, Dr. Hunt, thank you. And including myself, uh, my name is Yen Chu. I'm the chairwoman of the AEYP uh, program. It's uh, been a pleasure to working with all this uh, wonderful and you know, successful uh, doctors and to be able to work out you know, such a great you know, program. So Dr. Ning Ling is an award-winning neurosurgeon who brings a unique combination of neurosurgical and endovascular experience in treating a wide range of vascular diseases of the brain and the spine with an expertise in the treatment of cerebrovascular disorders. Upon graduating from Duke University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Bioengineering, uh, thank you very much, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm truly humbled by that wonderful introduction, and I don't know if that's really myself, but... Um, so, uh, I want to thank uh, all the organizers, Dr. Liang, Dr. Minkyo Chen, Dr. Wong, honorary chairwoman, and to, uh, to invite me here to share some experiences, mostly personal, with uh, everybody here. Um, you know, I want to keep this short. Uh, I. Uh, I was born in Beijing, and I, I grew up in China. Uh, my parents have been here much longer than I did, and I sort of stayed behind and with my grandparents. And I think that experience probably was not entirely unique, and many folks over here may have something like that. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so with a, a deep commitment and advocacy in providing patients with high-quality, comprehensive primary care that prioritizes communication and con continuity, Dr. Judy Tung is a leading academic general in internalist with a specialization in women's health and preventive medicine. Thank you very much for having me today. It is a great honor to be with you. Um, so like um, the other speakers, I'm going to try to remember way, way back to when I was in your shoes and some of the uh, forks in the road that brought me here. Um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, my parents were from Guangzhou originally, but grew up really in Taiwan, which is where I still have some family. And they raised me to prioritize uh, the service professions. And so I knew pretty much since I was a kid that I wanted to be either a teacher or a nurse or a doctor. Um, having an affinity for science, um, I chose the path of doctoring, um, but decided that because I was going to dedicate my life to science, Dr. Wang immigrated to the United States from Hainan Province, China, where he received a doctorate degree from the New York College of Osteopathic Medicine. He completed his internal medicine residency training at New York Hospital Medicine Center of Queens and was later appointed as medical director for the hospital's early treatment for the admitted patients unit as well as a teaching faculty member for his residency and physician assistance program. Lovely introduction. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I 
morning, though. Actually, today is my daughter Cassie's birthday, too. Oh, All right. Happy birthday to her. Thank you. Um, so uh, I actually tried to prepare. I'm never a good public speaker. So um, um, since uh, I think two months ago, I've been uh, getting my heart rate up. So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming, listening to this uh, forum talk. And um, since two months ago, when I tried to volunteer, my, volunteer myself as a speaker, I've been worried about it. Because look at who the speaker we have here. We have Dr. Judy Tang, the big academ academic physicians who are running a medicine uh, program, uh, chairman of the department of medicine in, in the uh, downtown hospital, and we have a neurosurgeon um, who graduated from Duke and Harvard, big academic people, and uh, I, as a internist, I always call myself a lowly internist. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I must say something first. that I, I, I know Vincent for a while, but, uh, but that was a very touching personal story. I, I always admire courage and hard work. That's probably the most important thing for anybody to achieve. You have a goal, you really work on it, and then you, you get to it eventually. That's, that's very inspiring. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll say this relatively, uh, I don't want to sound cliche, but essentially you need to make a personal or career choice uh, based upon sort of an experience that really touch your heart, uh, that, that you sort of understand what is the most important to you. I'll echo everything that you said about doing what you love because the one thing that you can be sure of is that the climate will change. Your boss will change, the reimbursement models will change, everything will change and so um, you can't hang your hopes and dreams on external factors. You have to really do um, what drives your heart. But the piece of advice that I think I want to give you is to um, find good mentors and to not shy away from feedback. I think the two go hand in hand, because if you look for mentors who only tell you you're doing a good job, then you're really not progressing. But if you have, you surround yourself with people in your life who are able to look at you really, really critically and tell you perhaps areas of your weaknesses that you can work on, or perhaps guide you in directions that you can't even see because that's obviously not the stage in your life where you have that vision, then you have um, a support system by which um, even if you stumble. And she's very outgoing. She's very talkative. She, she, she'll she bore you to death when you when you she start talking. So I said, Cassie, you like talking to people and you love science. N medicine is a perfect fit for you. That's why eventually she, 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 she realized that, yeah, that sounds about right. So uh, my word to all of the younger generation is don't hesitate to try. Don't be afraid to try. If you, can, if you think you like, like it, you can, you can do it. Okay, you believe in yourself. That's it. Life experiences. Now, we have a good mixture of academic and uh, clinical medicine. So given the uh, current environment of the Affordable Care Act, it's probably going to stay and probably it's going to get worse. Uh, you know, medicine today is probably not the same as medicine 20, 30 years ago. Um, you know, doctors' work is probably a lot more paperwork based, a lot of uh, sort of bureaucratic based than what it was before. Uh, electronic medical records is a uh, uh, it, it has uh, sort of double-edged swords, and then we are under a lot more governmental scrutiny and regulation compared with before. So recently, President Trump has devoted just Department resources to targeting universities that discriminate against white applicants. He has, however, said little about Asian Americans, who, according to critics of affirmative action, have it the worst. Uh, Dr. Wong, you mentioned your initial rejection was because you wrote in Chinese, but do you think it was also because you are Chinese? And Dr. Tommy, Dr. Wen, um, did being Asian close any doors that would have otherwise been open? Um, personally, I um, have thankfully not experienced um, any shut doors uh, because of that, although I am completely aware 
um, of the stereotypes that do exist around both me as an Asian person and also me as an Asian woman in a leadership role. Um, but I, I guess I consider it part of my job to enlighten people along the way. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I want to ask, is there a point in your life that you decided that doctor is the right path for you or um, did it happen gradually? If there is a point, what is that point? Uh, seriously? Well, well, I have two, two, two sets in my career. In China, I was a surgeon, just like Dr. Ming. Not as a you know, great surgeon, but a trauma surgeon uh, with constructions and everything. Uh, I love it. I love the OR. So, in medical school, you learn a lot of knowledge. Sometimes you have to force yourself to remember it. It's not very pleasant because you have to do it, you have to do it. But once you come out to patient contact, uh, I'm parents with two kids. Uh, so, right now, I'm a college professor I'm trying to encourage them to do whatever they want. But then, uh, in terms of uh, medicine, uh, because of, uh, we know that. Uh, U.S. education, college education, and uh, uh, medical education is not cheap. So how, as parents, uh, we can prepare for the financial situation for the best for the kids? Just to add a couple of other uh, possibilities. Uh, so most medical schools, uh, you know, public or private, have a relatively generous or uh, at least reasonable financial aid package. And myself was beneficiary of that. Uh, so, the, uh, the, the burden on the parents is, uh, uh, I, I actually very much like what Winston said, you know, we, we should not, as, as a parent, at least I say this now, if, if my son chooses to go to medical school, he's on his own, you know, I, I'll, help his co I'll help his college, everything else, is, he's on his own. And so, that's a kind of responsibility we place on children to allow them to grow, I mean, otherwise they will never grow out of uh, their comfort zone. Uh, so, but from from the financial aid perspective, there is definitely uh, uh, very reasonable packages, and the, the loan is, uh, if you qualify, is the sort of zero percent uh, during medical school and the residence. You can defer in a very very long time. So it's not until you are actually working as attending, and then you, you really need to start paying them back. So that's that's why, as Judy said, usually we can reasonably pay them back. Uh, in a shorter period of time and then live relatively. Are there any um, sacrifices that you had to, had to make while going on this route? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, saw, we saw some, um, well, your, your daughter's birthday is today, right? So you're, you're here. Well, that's not that's not, that's not the, the big thing. I, I, mean, <laughs> I just have too much to say. Um, Excuse me, like to say to my patients, I always talk. Um, the biggest sacrifice we have uh, for me for my life is when I was in medical school here at Nikon, actually I sent uh, two of my baby back to China for two years. I uh, missed them desperately. So that's, that's some sacrifice you have to do. You have to go through the medical training here, and we, we have to uh, make some sacrifice. The same thing go to your becoming a doctor. I, I, I believe Dr. Dr. Lin, Dr. Tong. When you're working long hours, you sacrifice your personal life. So you have to be to be definitely in love with this profession if you uh, want to move forward. So. Okay, um, we are going to present a souvenir to the three speakers who have given us such a wonderful lecture uh, speech. Uh, the life, about their life experience and answering all these questions. So we're going to present them a, a appreciation uh, gift, um, which was uh, generous, generously donated by Tiffany at uh, Americana Manhattan.
don't know if you know this, but uh, Jesus Christ's disciples are fishermen. <laughs> they're also he fish. they're also healers too. Okay. So you know what? And you know what where they are now. They're saints, right? They're saints. So you have the potential of being sainthood. <laughs> <laughs> so be before I, uh, you know, give my closing remarks, I think we should give uh, thanks to Andrew and uh, Francis. Thank you so much again. Okay, I'm proud.